In this video, we're going to look at what it might take to be able to run a Bitcoin miner off-grid on solar. So let's start by having a look at what kind of uh, power requirements we have for Bitcoin miners. Um, there's a popular website called ASIC Miner Value, so we'll have a look over there. Let's just have a look at Bitcoin miners. And uh, we'll set our power rate to zero. Okay, let's uh, try jumping down and finding something like the S21. So these are all three phase miners, we'll skip that. Let's just stick to single phase miners. Okay, so we're starting to get, I know there's still three phase here. Okay, so this is like a really popular uh, single phase miner. So in this territory, we can see we're sort of around the 36, 3500 watts territory. Okay, so now we know how much power we need. So we take our 3600 watts, so let's call that 3.6 kilowatts, and we're going to need that power 24 hours a day. So you really need to run the miners 24 hours. If you try to run them for a shorter period, like 8 hours, the hash boards tend to die as they heat up and cool down. So if you don't want a whole lot of hardware failure, you need to run them 24 hours a day. And let's say there's 30 days in a month. Okay, so we're going to need around 2,500 kilowatt hours per month. Um, what we'll do is we'll round that up to 3,000 because some of the miners understate how much power they use and 3,000 will be a safer margin. I've got an on-grid solar system. I've got 12 panels of 410 watts and uh, I've downloaded the last four months and then sorted by the worst month. So for me, um, around June is the worst month. That's winter for me. And I get around 300, uh, 300 kilowatt hours. So if we remember that we needed 3,000 kilowatt hours per month to run one Bitcoin miner, that means we're going to need about 10 times as much solar generation. So with 10 times as much, that means we're going to need around 120 solar panels. So let's say we arrange those into strings of 10. That means we're going to need 12 strings all together to be able to plug this in. All of these prices are in New Zealand dollars. I'll bring it back to US dollars to make it easier for others to compare at the end. But if we take something like a, a day or DI hybrid converter, uh, inverter, sorry, an eight kilowatt model, um, these are about five and a half thousand each and they have two string inputs. So if we need 12, we're going to need six of these to be able to plug in all the panels. So just remember that. I'll bring it back at the end when we figure out what all the costs are. Now remember when I said that we've got to keep these things running 24 hours a day, that means we're going to need some kind of battery capacity. So let's have a go at working out what we need. So we said we're going to allow about 3.5 kilowatt hours per, um, per Bitcoin miner. And let's just work out our total power for a day, so times 24 hours. So that means we're going to use about 84 kilowatt hours per Bitcoin miner. Now let's say we had strong sun for six hours a day. That means we're going to lean on our, need to lean on a battery for the other 18 hours per day. So that means 18 divided by 24 times uh, 84 kilowatts for the day. So we're going to need around 63 kilowatt hours of storage. Now it's not quite going to be this bad because what's going to happen is um, the other, you know, two or three other hours on the fringe at the beginning and the end, we will get some solar generation, but this just gives us a number to work with. Okay, so what we'll do is let's look at a DIY battery, the Basin, the Basin Green, um, Basin Green batteries. They are uh, really popular, and if you YouTube them, you'll find uh, they get really good reviews. So um, they do this DIY pack that can take 16 batteries, 345 amp hour batteries. That's around 16 um, kilowatt hours. And these sort of come out around um, six, uh, maybe uh, 5,000 New Zealand dollars landed, uh, delivered to your door. 400 watt odd um, solar panels tend to be the best value as in dollars per watt. And they're sort of around the $410. So let's start pulling that all together. So we're going to need 120 panels at about $410 each, so about $49,000 in solar panels. We're going to need six hybrid inverters at about five and a half thousand. So we're going to need around 33,000 in hybrid inverters. Now those batteries we looked at, they were about uh, 16 kilowatt hours each. And remember, we needed 63 kilowatt hours. So that means we need four of those batteries at 5,000 each, so about $20,000 in batteries. And this is probably really the minimum batteries. You may well need more if you want to be able to cope with um, shady days. You could either choose to not run the ASICs or, um, 
or you're going to need more batteries. And then with this quantity of solar panels and inverters, I think you could easily be looking at 20,000 for the installation. There's, apart from the huge labor cost, there's going to be a lot of rails and mounting kits and wires and all sorts of crimped connectors. So all up, you're probably looking at about 122,000, which is about 70,000 US dollars for each Bitcoin miner that you want to run purely off solar, off grid. So to summarize that again, so for each one of these single phase miners you want to run, you're going to need almost 50 kilowatts of solar panels. That's so probably going to be around 120 solar panels. Probably going to, you need something that'll be able to 10 or 12 MPTT inputs. Uh, some people like uh, Victron, they make some controllers that can handle four, but um, they tend to cost twice as much. So either way, we're looking at about the same amount of money. So probably something like six hybrid inverters. So probably a good $33,000 in inverters. Um, the really cheap DIY batteries, you'll probably need about $20,000 of them. If you go for name brand batteries, that number will easily be double. And uh, because of the huge number of components, I think you could easily be looking at uh, 20 grand. So, so all up, remember off grid per Bitcoin miner, probably about 122,000 New Zealand or about 70,000 uh, US dollars. So I hope that answered your question about what's required to be able to run a Bitcoin miner off grid. Thanks for watching.